Welcome. We are going to do an easy saucer magnolia with watercolor. If you don't know me, I'm Viv from Art with Viv and um, let's just dive in. Come on. Now I've got my five, I've got a five by six area taped off in my sketchbook. I'm just using sketchbook paper today, but I learned that I'm going to regret it. So I'm just going to draw my saucer magnolia in here and I'm just doing something small. You know, on Mondays I like to do small things that are not complicated just to get those juices flowing and get you ready for a creative week. So I'm going to draw those, draw out those. I'm going to draw the petals and I erase a lot. That's why I don't really draw a lot on camera because I'm an eraser. I'm like an eraser holic, but I'm just getting in the just getting in the the bare minimum of the shape of this saucer magnolia. Some people call it tulip trees. I love these. I don't have one in my yard, but right now in North Carolina, these are blooming and they are gorgeous. I love them. I've always wanted one in my yard, but I've just never planted one. Maybe that is going to be a project for me for the spring and let it bloom it'll have to bloom next year because it's too late for me to plant it to get blooms now obviously so we're just gonna put in a little stem here let's put in some we're gonna put in a few leaves we're gonna have some green going on and once we get this drawn in then we're gonna paint it I get it all sketched in it's a little bit dark for my for my taste so I'm just taking a kneaded eraser and just sort of picking up some of that excess graphite but it's I still want it dark enough that you can see it in the camera again this is just something to get me started for the week this is not meant to be a masterpiece as you see I've got it in my little sketchbook here I'm painting on terrible paper and let me tell you it is rough going so I've wet that first petal. I'm getting sort of a purpley pink mixture, a reddish purple mixture. Um, and I am just dropping that into that clean water and letting it flow across. Now I'm trying to keep in mind that the saucer magnolias are lighter around the edges of their petals. So I don't want that pink to go all the way to the edge of the petal. I want it to stay lighter around the edges and more of the color will be concentrated toward the center and then wherever the shadows are. So I'm lifting a little bit of that up off that one side because that side is a little bit lighter. Next, I'm just wetting this next petal and I'm gonna do a mixture that has just a little bit more purple in it. I want that petal to look like it's a little further away so I don't want it as bright as that first petal we painted. So I'm going to add just a touch more of the purpley color in there and sort of, it doesn't really gray it down, but it darkens it just a little bit so that it looks like it's a little further away. Now, while this petal's still wet, I am going to take some of the bright reddish purple and start just painting with the very tip of my brush, just dropping in some of those veins and lines that are on that petal. And we'll go back and darken them up in a little bit it's wet so they're they're really soft and they are real they're going to be really pale because they're sort of they're sort of just fading into that wetness but we're going to darken them up we're just getting the basics going now just add a little bit of a shadow to this other petal over here and just sort of blending that out a little bit now i am just mixing up a little bit of green I am going to put a little bit of yellow green as the base color on the leaf and I'm just going to spread that around. It is dry so I am just going ahead and putting it straight onto dry paper. So once I get that first little layer in there while it's still wet, I'm going ahead and adding a darker green and letting it blend together while it's still wet. This is a wet on wet technique. We put the yellow green directly onto dry paper 
Then once we got it down, we're just putting in some darker greens for the shadows and letting those sort of blend with the water. same thing with this other leaf we put down our yellow green first and then we're just coming back with some darker green and adding that to it while it's still wet letting those colors blend together letting the, the greens blend together so that there'll be nice soft transitions we're not looking for anything too hard just yet now this petal has dried so I'm going back into my purpley reddish purple color and I am going ahead and just with the very tippy tippy toe of my brush painting some of these veins that are in the petal. Once you get those veins all in, I'm going to go ahead and wet the stem. And some of that green is a little bit wet. That's fine. I want that green to blend in with the brown. Then I'm just going to take some brown and I'm just dropping it into the water. I'm leaving a little bit of the white of the paper showing through. And I want it to have a little bit of a rough looking texture. So that's what I'm going for. Then I'm going to add a little bit of darker brown. And I'm just dotting it in there with the very tip of my brush until I get it pretty well, you know, a pattern in there. dried so I'm just going to come back in there and add a little bit more color a little bit more yellow green in some spots a little bit more of the darker green to make it have a little bit more shadow so we're just doing wet on dry right now and that's because I want to just have some shadows but I don't want it to bleed so I need some hard edges what I was trying to avoid on other things sometimes you need your hard edges sometimes you don't you just you got to balance it out and know what you need. And I'm adding some really a much darker green here into some of these shadows. And I'm just going to add a little light green on top of the leaf poking up and a little darker green around the edges. I'm also, while this branch is still wet, I'm just dropping in some more green. And I am going to put some green, darker green right in that little stem that the bud is sitting on. And then I'm just going to go ahead and wet this, this petal back here with some clean water and just go ahead and drop in that pinky color. Once we get that in, we're just going to go over here. This petal has dried, so I'm just going to add a little shadow to it and darken up this shadow where the two petals overlap this huge petal. Add a little pink to this other petal here to the side. Blend it out with a little bit of clean water to the edge, but I want to leave that edge lighter, a little bit lighter. Actually, we're going to come back and paint it darker, but for right now, we are just getting in just the palest wash of pink there. Now I'm going to come back here with a little bit of darker green and clean up some of these shadows a little bit on this leaf. 
Uh, the leaf is dry, but you see this is some terrible paper. I do not recommend um, this sketchbook paper that I'm painting on. It is really hard to work with, and it just really shows you, shows me especially, since I'm the one painting on it, that, you know, buy the best paper that you can afford. I just wanted to do a quick sketch, so I'm not that worried about it, but I'm going to tell you, it is much harder to paint on this this than regular watercolor paper and this is actually a watercolor sketchbook but the paper is not good quality so now I'm coming in here and darkening up some of this area putting a little bit of shadow into the larger petal and I'm just doing that directly onto dry paper and then I'm just blending it out a little bit with my brush but I do recommend to buy the best paper you can afford. Paper makes the biggest difference, I think. You can have janky brushes, you can have cheap watercolor paints most of the time, but if you got cheap paper, oh, mm, that's, that'll kill you. Now, you can deal with some janky brushes, you can deal with some janky watercolor, but janky paper is just the worst. So I'm just adding some shadows into this little petal here, and I'm just kind of um, painting it right onto the dry paper so you'll see it has a little bit of a hard edge there on each where the shadow is I'm gonna come back later and fix that I'm not bothering with it now Putting a little bit of the darker pink here where this petal is sort of curled up so we're getting a little shadow here so I'm just gonna go ahead and put a darker pink there and a little bit on the other edge of the petal a little bit of shadow in inside of the petal and now I am just dabbing up some of those hard edges that I just spoke to you about. That's right, I spoke to you about them. I spoke it. <laughs> so now we're just going a little bit darker with a little bit of the purpley pink here on down the edge of this petal. And I'm trying to leave just a little bit of the white of the paper there because the edges of these petals are much paler than the actual center parts. So I'm trying to leave a little white, fine white line there. I also added a little bit of the green because where the flower petals actually attach to that little green stem, some of the green is actually kind of in there. The, the, the very base of these petals have a little tinge of green to them. So I'm just adding while it's while the pink is still wet, I'm just kind of dropping in a little bit of green there. And just sort of blending it up with the very tip of my brush while it's still wet. Now this dried really awful, the stem did. So what I'm doing is I'm putting clean water in there and I've just dropped in drops of clean water and I'm gonna let it set for a second. And because this is such cheap paper, I'll be able to lift that paint right off with no problem. Here we go. See, I just took a tissue, lifted all that heavy, dark paint up. I didn't like the way it looked. I wanted a more textured stem. So all I did was just take and drop some clean water dots in there and just let it sit for a second, let it soak in, and then just picked up the excess paint with the water. Now I'm just adding a few details to this petal that's curled over, putting a little bit of a, a green in there as well where that it's kind of cupped up around the very base of this beautiful flower so we are just boot scooting right along i'm still gonna fuss with these little veins in here so i am just right onto dry paper the paper is dry i'm just going to add some more veins i'm trying to use a very light touch and just get some of the veins some of the texture in there and a few little bits of shadow as well. And that sort of separates these petals from each other so that you can tell that one is on top and one is opposite of it. And I'm just gonna add a little more color down here for some shadow, darken it up, and just sort of fan it out with the tip of my brush to sort of fluff it out a little bit. All right, we're getting there. We are getting there. So now, let me just, let me kind of blend this a little bit. It's bothering me. So I'm going to fuss with a little bit. I'm just taking some clean water and just sort of blending that and softening it. Up. And just adding a little bit more green in there. And adding a little bit more green here. And just a 
few more shadows. Now I went and got this part. I'm going to go ahead and recommend you skip this part, but I included it so that you could see what I did, but don't do this. I'm taking a watercolor pencil and then a flat brush and I'm coloring on the paper and then uh, activating the watercolor with the flat brush and some clean water. And I started it and at first I, it was okay, but the more I did it, the less I liked it. So again, don't do this step. Don't do this step. Don't use a colored pencil. I mean, a not colored pencil, a watercolor pencil to add the background. Don't do it. So after I did this, I decided I hated it, just hated it. So I decided I was going to go get my dark blue, some really dark blue, and make that background really dark and juicy because I hated this. I didn't like any of that. So I was like, oh, just, we'll just do something different. And that is, that's part of creativity. That's part of learning learn what you like what you don't like i thought it would look nice it did not look nice so i'm just coming in here with some really dark blue and i'm wetting the paper a little bit then sort of blending out the dark blue i don't want it to be um a solid wash i want it to be sort of have some light and dark areas so that it looks a lot prettier so i'm going to let you watch that all i'm doing is just painting it with a nice dark blue and i'm going to let you watch and i will be back shortly So once you get that background like you want it painted in, and I like that much better than I like the uh, the watercolor pencil, I took some white gouache, and as I've been telling you, the borders on the petals are a lot lighter. So I'm just taking and just enhancing that. I'm taking a really fine brush, and I'm taking some white gouache, and just going around those edges, adding some highlights here and there. And I really think that that cleans it up a little bit makes it look much better even though i know we're just doing we're just we're just messing we're not doing any kind of mona lisa here but you know it's all part of the experimenting and learning what works and what looks good and what doesn't look good and you saw that i took a little chance on some watercolor pencil on the background hated it covered it up with a darker blue this would have been a very different painting if I had used really quality watercolor paper instead of the sketchbook. This, it would have, the paper would have performed so much differently. But I'm still pleased with this. It's a nice little sketch. It's good to get my little brain going so that I'll be ready to paint. And I always like to do like a little practice painting. 
before I really start on my, and I'm doing air quotes, my serious paintings. I like to do one that's just for fun that I'm not worried about. And that's what I encourage you to do. It's sort of a little warm up and you get all the kinks worked out and you get your mind focused on watercolor. And once you get this, like, you know, this little fun, easy painting out of the way, then you're ready to really buckle down and do that seriously good artistic work that I know you're capable of. So I've got all those little white highlights in there now. I think I probably need to get a little, I think I want to, let me blend this out just a little bit. And then I'm going to take some darker brown and just add a little bit more texture to the stem. I'm not going to blob it up like I did before. So you've seen me make mistakes, how I've corrected them, and struggle with this terrible paper. But there we go. Now we have it. I hope you give this a go. It's not hard. Don't be too hard on yourself. Just, just use your instincts and do what you like. All right, there you go. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe. Please share it with a friend that might get something out of it. And I will see you next Monday. Happy painting.